welcome back. Today we'll be looking at the Coma Electronic Field Kit and specifically we want to take it out of its case and attach it, the circuit board, to this uh, metallic board that will allow us to mount the field kit in a Eurorack case of our choice. So we'll go through this. I've uh, discovered actually online that there, are, there really isn't a video that goes through this. It's a pretty simple procedure. And one option is you can go to a Coma's website and download the instructions and get that information. But we'll use this video as an opportunity to talk about how to do this very simple process and then the advantages of mounting the fuel kit in a Eurorack case. So the first thing I should say is that this was one of my initial devices that really got me into the electroacoustic world. If you've seen some of my early videos, in fact, one of my uh, field kit videos is one of my top viewed ones and I think a big part of that is there's an interest in this uh, particular approach to electroacoustic uses of sound and music and then secondly I think it's just one of my earlier videos so over the years people have ended up watching it which is great thank you for watching as usual so when I first got the field kit I didn't have any of my Eurorack gear and since purchasing the field kit I've sold um, thousands of dollars worth of equipment to buy more equipment. It's one of the things you know a lot of us do I think when we change our studio setup and we start to think about new directions in sound and musical experimentation. So I initially got the field kit because of all the array of uh, opportunities here to do different things. It really has a, a lot of utilities to it. The mixer is something I don't use today any longer. I actually had an issue with one of my mixer channer, channels and I sent it to uh, Coma to fix and they, they sent it back to me. So it was a little bit of expense I had to take on and actually in retrospect I wish I wouldn't have done that fix because now I'm not really using the mixer section at all. And really what I'm using this device for is an extra driver, not really for the solenoid, more for the uh, DC motor that I've used in some compositions. Also certainly the CV radio is really handy. Having an extra LFO doesn't hurt. And then I think certainly having the ability to use signals and sensors here in this section make it worth it. In fact if you want to get these separate functions in Eurorack modules, and you could do most of these, you could certainly get a Bastel module for the sense, you could get a Bastel module for the solenoid for a DC motor as well you could get a servo motor which you cannot attach on on this device you could certainly get an LFO module you could get a, a radio module um, actually this one is, is pretty good as far as what it has and then of course you could get mixer modules and um, you know handle some of those features the envelope follower as well but to do that you could spend upwards of five six hundred dollars just to get those modules so it still remains I think a really practical solution for a lot of people to do electroacoustic experimentation I also had the field kit effects unit it just wasn't speaking to me and once I got into Eurorack I really wanted to get away from having standalone devices I certainly still have a few but one of the reasons for getting this panel and I got it on sale it runs, at least in the U.S., about $35, and you're just getting simple, simply the panel. It did not come with a, a cable for um, plugging this in, for basically ditching the wall wart and then plugging it into your Eurorack case, but there may be versions out there that also include that. But about $35 for this, I got a 10% discount on it, so it was just under $30, bucks. so I think it's it's pretty well worth it. My other option is to have something like this, to have it set up on a shelf in back of my Eurorack cases, and then to use the various functions, but um, I didn't really want to do that. So as I said, the effects unit I was not too keen on. It's a great unit, but it just wasn't working with my setup with my other Eurorack gear. I really want to bring this back into the fold to use the CV radio, certainly the sense uh, modules, and then also potentially using the DC motor as an additional motor. I'll show you my setup, which is now becoming my electroacoustic setup. This will take a place beside my basal modules and two of my ear modules to really give me the opportunity to have a small Eurora case just for the purpose of doing electroacoustic experimentation with solenoids, with motors, and some other devices. And maybe at the end of this video, I'll include a little bit of that so you do get a little bit of sound exploration in this video as well. So as I'm saying, if I don't use this panel to put it into my case, 
then I really do have to think about how this is going to function on a desktop. If I were doing a, a gig out somewhere or doing my micro environment series on a tabletop, this would actually be very handy and maybe I could use the, the, the mixers as well. Although I find that my small dude mixer is actually um, really a better purpose for, for doing some of those um, experiments. You also do get the auxiliary bus here and you get the speaker out. So if you want to attach a speaker and then do some feedback stuff, in various ways using your electromagnetic mic as well which is an add-on with the field kit then there are a lot of possibilities so for me also getting rid of the wall wart is is going to be well worth the um, the cost of of using this particular panel to redo things okay so to do this next operation to uh, make the conversion it's actually super simple so you're going to go along i've, I've pre done these already you're going along and you're taking out on the um, 3.5 millimeter audio jacks you're just going to remove every single nut so the I believe there are one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen of those and these are just I didn't realize this but this is just a circuit board in here and all you're going to be doing is removing these and that is what's actually holding it to um, to the base basically in here as you're going to see. So really simple to do, I've, I've pre-done these. Just get a wrench that will fit that particular width and um, start it, it doesn't take that much and then once you do it, you can, uh, it takes a little bit of time but get it started with your wrench or you could use a set of pliers as well. It, it's not on there, it's not threaded very hard. Once you do that, you'll find removing these pretty easy. Again, there are 17 of these, so I've already done that. And this is just the, the cover of the fuel kit. Once you've done that, it's very easy to remove the unit. All you'll do at this point is pull out the cover, the plate, and it's, I'm struggling a little bit because I removed the screws on the bottom. So when you do this, it's gonna come right off. But I'm struggling only because I removed three of the four screws on the bottom already. So you can see the plate you get when you remove it is smaller. Um, the holes are basically exactly the same, which makes sense because it needs to fit. And then you're just getting the extension to fit it in your Euro rack. And I suppose if you were super handy out there, it would be kind of hard to do this for me because this is machine metal, but that's really all you're getting are those four holes to put it into your case. And then you're getting the um, writing on the top and the name of the field kit on the bottom. But I kind of wish that there was a little more, I, I wish this with my Folktech Mescaline as well, that there was more compatibility between the case that this is in and your rack. So we could get that same proprietary size. And it would be great actually if this were the size of the field kit box. And then you could simply take it out of the box. When you're done taking it out of the box, you would just put it right in your Euro rack case. And then guess what? You could use the remaining case for a mini, I don't know how many HP that is, but it would be a really useful case. Unfortunately, as I'll show you in a second, that's not the situation here. You actually can't use this for, say, putting a bunch of utility modules for your rack. So it's kind of disappointing from a design standpoint. I'm not sure why that's the case because there's nothing to this as you're going to see. So the next step is we'll remove the four screws that are found on each of the four corners. Very easy to do. I picked up one of these. It's a multi-screwdriver that has every possible head you can imagine for all different small devices that could be many of your electronic devices. It could be other things around the house as well. And you'll just remove that, four screws. And make sure when you do this, you just don't lose the screws in the process. So once the screw is out there, then you have the circuit board. And just to show you what's remaining, I actually discovered this. I'll just have to get some wood glue, but the it looks like these little wood pieces are what holds up the sides of the case. And then the inside, there are a few staples here. And you could see the back here where the wall wart goes. And my case got a little damage over time. It looks like those are the staples or small nails that holds together. What 
looks to be like here it's um, a type of particle board. So what I can do is just, just glue that in later. I guess what I'm going to do is save this case. I'm not planning on selling the fuel kit. I had thought about it, but then I thought, you know, I can really use the CV radio, the sensor block as well, because it's not something I currently have in my Eurorack. And I tried to look at redundancy. If I have a device that can be, that a sound or um, utility can be accomplished on the case, then typically I don't want to keep that device around just because of cost, being able to sell it and get something out of it, and then also just because of space and ergonomics. So this is what I'm talking about. I just wish that this would fit in here, right? Like there's no reason that you couldn't design a case in such a way that when you strip the case out, you could use it later for something else. I mean, this would be really cool. I could fit in so many Pico 3HP modules or 2HP brand, 2HP size modules in there. Currently, it wouldn't work. Now, that being said, you'd probably have to have a little more depth on there because a lot of skiff cases don't allow for a lot of depth with your modules. Um, now, you, of course, you wouldn't have the power, but you could use something like I have, which is the Mantis Power, which is low cost power from tip top, you could have that in there and you could still have a pretty decent amount of HP to get some modules in there. And I will say it's a similar situation. I recently mounted into my cases, my Folktech Mescaline, same deal, I've got the case left and the question becomes, what do I do with the case, um, with the stand? So in this situation, you could see they actually would fit. What I could do, um, I, I could totally jerry-rig this, right? I could actually drill holes um, just in the metal and then I think I'd have to look at this as far as whether the bottom module would it work I think it would for some low depth modules so that's actually something I might consider I don't know um, I guess I would have everything exposed to the air and to dust yeah it would be maybe a possibility I'm not sure with the uh, voltage research laboratory if you have it in the case if you take it out of the case and put it in your own case, you could actually use the old case to power module. So it's just a small complaint I have about something like this in terms of the design. That being said, we're gonna make it work now with our Eurorack setup. So this is what you get once you take it out of the case. So you can see the main difference here is we're not gonna be powering using the wall wart. We're gonna power it using a typical 16 to 10 pin Eurorack cable and they have the red stripe marked in here, so very easy to follow that and not short your board out. So it's a really complex module, right? And it's gonna take up a decent amount of space in any case you might put it in. So I'll show you in a second how I have one case that's just dedicated to electroacoustic modules of various sorts. And that allows me flexibility when I'm working with some of my sound gear outside of my studio space, like in my garage doing bigger stuff. So once you have your uh, circuit board out, you're just going to take it and you're going to carefully mount it on top here. The manual from Coma mentions the fact that it could be an issue if you get um, an, an out of place LED. I actually didn't find that to be an issue. So it goes in there super nice. As you can see there, everything is flush. It's perfectly fit. There are no deviations of any sort. And then what we're going to do next, I won't um, show you this on camera, that'd be pretty boring, but we're gonna just reverse our process. We're not gonna need those screws, so you could just keep those if you sell your fuel kit or keep them for something else. We're going to go back in and take those 17 screws. We're going to finger tighten those, and then maybe just when we get to the end, taking care so as not to scratch the case. These don't have to be super tight. Um, this may not be the exact right size wrench here, but it's what I found on a quick look in the garage. And yeah, so again, it's just going to hold these 17 points of contact are going to hold the circuit board to our new Eurorack mountable um, surface uh, faceplate here. So that is going to provide that. So I'll meet you on the other side here once we get all these screws on. Okay, I'm back and I did the uh, 17 nuts on there. And overall, you know, it's pretty easy to put them back on. If you find one that isn't threading correctly, just re-thread it, kind of common sense. And then at the very end, I just take my wrench. And a lot of these you can do kind of like that, depending on the spacing here, or you have to go on top and just kind of tighten them. But um, yeah, since you have 17 of these, you know they're obviously gonna hold up your circuit board, which is a fairly meaty one by um, 
all standards. These by the sensor block here get a little bit tight so you just have to get your, your fingers in there. And that's what it looks like after the fact. So we've finished that part. The only thing we'll need to do is to get a, again, 10 pin to 16 pin cable. So here we go there. And we just want to, as always, keep our red stripe in the direction of where it needs to be. It would help if I had this in camera, I suppose. I don't have a monitor set up here, so I'm just guessing with the camera. But I've got my red stripe where it says red stripe, so I should be good to go. And it's probably pretty too long of a cable. But once I do that, I'm just going to plug it into my power. So in my case, I've got my tip top audio case here. And this is the case that I've decided will become the case for my electroacoustic modules. And I've heard some things about flying bus cases as far as interference and noise. And I thought, well, one way around that, I haven't really had an issue with that case. And I have the Happy Endings case here, which I got used. And then I made my own wooden case just in my shop. And I had to really beef up the back of this because for some reason it was a little top heavy. It was, it was um, on, even on a flat surface, wanting to kind of tip forward so I had to counter balance it with a lot of weight of um, some pretty heavy walnut wood in the back of the case and stained it and so forth. So I think I did a, a pretty decent job engineering that and it's not my forte but did it and I thought I can use it now for my electroacoustic module. So to go through these as you can see I'll have the Coma Electronic Field Kit here. I will use that primarily for an extra DC motor driver maybe an envelope follower, possibly the LFO, though I have a ton of LFOs over here on my in my cases. Definitely we'll use the CV radio and the sensor slash signal block, which allows me to take all my various sensors and put them to use. I did a video back in the day on the field kit, back when I had it in its original case that it came in, that talked about all the various sensors, so I hope to bring those back in the near future. And then going down the line here, I recently got on sale a second servo motor because I've been really enjoying, I have two types of servo motors, one that will make a motion like this that allows me to trigger some um, percussion. And then also there's another one that's fully circular. I'm thinking of that more as a interaction with chimes or something like that. And at the end of this video, I'll show you a sample just of a few of the experiments using some of these modules. And then I've got two DC motor drivers. And I should say that even though I said, you know, that the Coma Field Kit will do solenoids and DC motors, it really doesn't do what the Bastel modules can do in terms of the movement and even the amplitude with the solenoids of your various electroacoustic devices. So these are better for me by, by all means. Now the disadvantage of the Bastel modules is each of these has to be powered by a wall wart because they do draw a lot of power and a Eurorack case is not going to suffice. So I, I had to buy them. They're pretty cheap, about seven, eight bucks. Basically a computer monitor. It's a, a 12 volt, five amp uh, power supply that's going in the top of these. So you need five wall warts if you're using all these at the same time. The solenoid modules here, it runs four solenoids with four different control signals or gate signals. And then I have an add-on module I got on sale that will be my first ever attempt to solder and create a module um, on, its, on my own. So we'll see how that goes. I'll do maybe a video on that. And then down here I have two of the ear modules which are really good for, I don't use the built-in piezos, you could use those. I use it mainly for really cranking up the gain on a signal. It could be a signal I'm trying to use through a MALT module to multiply a, a, a CV or a gate signal. More typically, it will be um, a piezo signal or something like that. I can crank that up, get it loud enough, and send the out, um, the envelope or the gate out. And that allows me to do some stuff with gain that is also accomplished, of course, through the Coma Field Kit. I may also use uh, the mixers. We'll, we'll have to see as far as the noise and, and the gain adjustments are handy by all means. But if I'm using it for audio, I would worry about noise. But of course, in a lot of cases, I'm trying to just get a signal from an electroacoustic source and then maybe run that into an envelope follower here or here for the purposes of using you know, uh, an external device like a drum head to trigger a module of, of any number here in my Eurorack case. So I think that's the plan. I have a little HP left here, which will be that teeny module for the solenoid, and then I have a little space here. So I could throw something else in or 
put on a, um, a blank panel or something like that. So that's what I'm planning as far as using this case for the Calm Electronic Field Kit. Now in its Eurorack form, I wanted to do this video just to give you a sense of how easy it is to transform your original Coma Field Kit module into the Eurorack version and to use it in one of your cases. So here at the end, I'll show you a brief musical experiment that shows you a little bit more of the electroacoustic potentials of the Field Kit as well as these other modules. So as always, thanks for listening and I'll be back with more videos on Eurorack, on compositions, on musical experiments of various sorts. So thanks for listening, I do appreciate. Take a chance, if you're not already a subscriber, to please subscribe to my YouTube channel here, I do appreciate it. So thanks for listening, I'll talk to you again soon.